continuing to roll out the Big Ten schedule on this Wednesday and very pleased to be joined by Nicole Auerbach from The Athletic. Nicole, I had a chance to speak with Kevin Warren a little bit earlier. I know you spoke with Kevin Warren, too, in anticipation of this schedule release. What was the biggest thing that stood out to you from that conversation? Well, the biggest thing, I think, is something that we've heard from Kevin Warren all along, which is that there might not be a season. I think he has been very straightforward about the real risks and the real health and safety protocols and and procedures that need to be followed for us to have a chance to have college football this fall. And I think it's been really refreshing. I Every time I do an interview with him, I get messages from administrators throughout the country who find it refreshing to hear that kind of honesty and just looking at this, you know, really clear eyed and, and not over promising or under promising and just being really straightforward about, you know, this is what we want to happen. This is the schedule that will be in place if we're able to have it, but we're still a long ways off. And by the way, here are all the things that our medical experts are telling us to do in the meantime. I agree with you. Kevin Warren's been very upfront about that, has spoken very frankly and very openly about the possibility of there not being a season. Again, this is a day where they released what that season will look like. Were it to happen, a lot of flexibility built into that schedule. What stood out to you about the plan that the Big Ten has come up with? Yeah, I thought the flexibility was pretty awesome. As someone who can kind of nerd out about schedules, I loved the way that you can fold some of those games in certain weeks, like week three through five, into the bye weeks that are right behind it. And that there's a number of games. I saw a different version of this schedule uh, that was color-coded that really showed just how flexible and how many bye weeks are coordinated across divisional opponents and also rivalry games to protect those games as much as possible and give them multiple slots to get rescheduled to. So I think it's really, really smart to go this way. I think you also give yourself a ton of flexibility. If you can't start week one, you can easily slide that to November 28th. So it's just a really sharp model. And I think, you know, having talked to um, some people around the league, I think they believe that it gives them the best chance to have something semblance, some semblance of a regular season and to get games played because of all of that flexibility and the way that it prioritizes divisional games and rivalry games. The Big Ten released medical protocols as well, and there has been so much talk about, well, how are you going to test? How frequently are you going to test? What are you going to do with the positives? All of those questions that surround this. What did you learn in asking the commissioner about those medical protocols? Yeah, I think the first thing that jumps out is is testing twice a week um, for for football and high contact sports. Um, you know, he uh, Commissioner Warren was talking to me about probably a Monday test and then the other one that would be in advance of the game. You know, we've seen that seventy two hour time frame in the NCAA's protocols, so maybe that's a Wednesday test to get a response. But they're also looking into more of those rapid response tests as well and and different advances in testing. Um, so ideally, you know, and, and this was something that was a pipe dream for athletic directors a couple months ago, but they would love to get to a point where you could test on Friday, get a result on Friday before playing a game on Saturday. So um, I just thought it was really smart to, you know, d- you know, double up the testing, do more testing than is the minimum requirement across the power five and also look at the advances and data that are emerging and be prepared to adapt. So. Um, You know, all of these power conferences have medical advisory groups and they are getting different information because this is a new virus and we're learning more about it week to week, month to month. Um, But I I do think, you know, it's clear that when you look at these protocols, they are grounded in the science and the medicine and what the doctors are recommending right now. Nicole, you've been writing quite a bit on The Athletic about some of the hurdles ahead for college football. And the most immediate one comes this week as the Big Ten has given the okay for its schools to open up camp. As of Friday, you wrote extensively about what those training camps are going to look like within the last week or so. Give us a sense of the questions that these schools are going to be dealing with and the challenges that are going to arise as they move from this voluntary workout stage into a training camp. Yeah, the number one thing is you're going to be talking about more players together at more time. Um, so, you know, what, one one thing that was interesting with talking with some of the teams that had scheduled week zero games, so they opened last Friday was, you know, how do you socially distance, uh, drills? You know, how do you separate, um, onto multiple practice fields? If you have them, what about, do you, do you shower after a practice? No. Um, you know, I, some of these programs in Marshall, for example, was saying that they were going to tell their players to change into their t-shirt and shorts, go home and shower. They're not going to have team meals. 
Um, they were going to be required to wear helmets throughout practice. And then, you know, there was a designated water bottle for each individual player in a designated spot on the side of the field um, to, again, just try to make sure that you're not, you know, getting any germs, any spit, any, <laughs> any saliva near anyone else. So these are the questions that everyone is going to be starting to deal with as they open camp is how can you socially distance football practice, even though you know you're going to be tackling, you know you're going to be blocking, how can you make it as safe as possible? And that's why everyone is going to be looking at what this means when you have these types of practices. What does it mean for the spread and potential cases on teams? And as we move it ahead from the practical challenges of a training camp to were we to get to playing the schedule, the practical challenges of playing a game, and one of those is travel. You know, Pat Forty, when we were speaking to him a few minutes ago, was talking about the University of Connecticut canceling its season today. Part of that being the fact that they are an independent. Part of that being perhaps due to the travel restrictions into the state of Connecticut. You wrote about this in the last couple of weeks. Give us a sense of what schools are grappling with on this front. Yeah, and this is going to be a, an issue that Big Ten fans should pay attention to as well. This is a conference that spans a lot of different states. And, you know, this is the best example, I think, of this is, is look at baseball. The Toronto Blue Jays were essentially homeless because Canada did not grant them an exemption so that they were going to have to be required to quarantine for 14 days every time they came back to Canada. That's not a way to have a season. So they got an exemption to do that. And I think that you're seeing, you know, Rutgers governor, uh, the governor of New Jersey has said that Rutgers is expected to get that exemption. But UConn was not likely to get that, which means you can't play games if you're expected to quarantine 14 days after coming back from a certain state or if your opponent coming from that state was coming to you, are they expected to quarantine for 14 days before you can play, right? So that is when we talk about how state and local officials are going to determine whether or not there can be a college football season. This is one of those examples. Nicole Auerbach from The Athletic. Thanks as always for your contributions, Nicole. Great to talk to you. Absolutely. Stay safe, Dave.